type of angle with like let's say a villainous or something or somebody slightly older. Again, I kind of start off the same way. You know, you get your whole shape there and like that. But now I'll probably I'll show you you know how things will start to look a little different. I mean it's still it's still the basic starting point. But now I'll uh, start to make the eyelids a bit heavier, maybe a little bit more eyeliner on the top, a little bit more on the bottom. And again, now I'm making the, uh, the eyeliner touch the dark, uh, the pupil, not the dark part, the pupil part of the eye. You'd be surprised how many of his artists draw these things and don't know the official name. <laughs> and, uh, and now I'll give her, maybe now that her eyelids are a little bit more heavy and, and, and kind of closed, I'll give her more of an upper eyelid to kind of like, kind of, you know, <clears throat> emphasize that. And again, she might still have her eyebrows raised quite a bit, but it's more in that sort of Cruella de Vil sort of, you know, kind of evil sort of way. I'll maybe give her like a little bit, uh, let's see. see I'm even skipping my own steps, I need to still. Uh, I find if I draw the nose first, then it, it's possible that, uh, see that the mouth is good because you got the eyes and the mouth. Um, the nose is going to fall somewhere in between there, and you can have more control over that. If you draw the nose first, the mouth might end up down here. So you just want to make sure you keep your your outer edges always in mind, so that uh, you don't end up with a super huge head. Because sometimes you'll you'll work out the head and the body in that rough stage. So you've got to make sure you stay within the real estate that you carved out for your head. Otherwise, your head, if it starts to grow based on the features you're adding, your head will grow compared to how you already worked out the body proportions to be. So you want to make sure you stay within the confines of what you roughed out. How do you go about capturing likenesses? Um, that's a good question. I'll try to touch on that. I've um, seen some like Scarlett Johansson being drawn and stuff like that in books, like the actors. And oh, things. thanks. That was, you know, that was my earliest influence was uh, Mad Magazine. I'm not sure if uh, yeah. it's kind of like past its heyday, in my opinion, but in the in the 70s, 80s period, like uh, there was a guy named Mort Trucker who did the most amazing caricatures, and he actually had a basis in comic book art, so he had more of a comic book approach to, to likenesses. And um, I found that, uh, again, with, with, with doing likenesses, it's not about getting caught up in the little details. You really have to take in the overall shape of somebody's face. Like if somebody's it's a celebrity, you really got to break down, like, well, what is what are those general, like, like, what are the things about this person that make them look like them at a glance? And, like, is it the chiseled cheekbones? Is it a certain kind of nose? Is it the shape of their head? Do they have a long head? Do they have a... And I'm not even saying, like, beat over the... You know, you don't want to be, like, one of those guys uh, who does this really over... Like, oh, guy has a slightly big nose, so you make his whole caricature a nose or something like that. It's, it's a subtle thing, but, but to get likenesses, it's, it's really about making sure you get that initial step down where you really figure out the person's shape. And, and then everything starts to fall into place if you've got sort of... Uh, the, the placement right, then, then if you go in there and draw the eye to look like the eye, it's, it's, it's more important that it's in the right spot. So I'm not sure if that makes as much sense as it does in my head. The trend was crazy. Oh, yeah. You know, in the Gen 13 days? Yeah. So like with this one, you know, I mean here she's got like a slightly pointier nose versus the sort of upswing there. Now she's, you know, it's, it's pointier. She seems more determined and wise. Um, I'll maybe like carve out like that cheekbone a little bit more now. You guys can kind of see, and then maybe I'll, I'll emphasize this part here a little bit. You know, maybe she'll have long, straight, like, you know, Morticia Adams kind of hair. Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, Baroness or something like that. You know, she'll be holding her goblet of wine here. 
like, yes, you know. <laughs> I mean, you can see how you can kind of like start, to, I mean, and, and basically both of these are just like, you know, the same basic start, but you know, here you've got the like, the young innocent heroine, you know, she almost like has an like, aerial kind of look to her or something there. And then you've got the, the villainess, or the white queen or something, I don't know, whatever, whatever you want it to be pretty much there. But you get the sense. So that's a little bit about heads. As far as like uh, odd angles, it's uh, I'll try to do a quick one here where you like tilt the head back. Like when the head tilts back, some, certain things change that you have to be definitely aware of. Like I said, a lot of those things they, they're still in the same sh spot, but now the chin. Now the space between the chin and the mouth it gets a little bit greater because now the chin's pointing right at the camera. And uh, the lips tend to do this inverted triangle kind of look where it's, you know, you're looking up now at this person. The space, whereas normally it seems like the nose is closer to the mouth, once the head tilts back, the nose is going to be much closer to the eyes because of the way it's tilting. Or at least a little bit more towards the middle. You can kind of see how that's starting to look like a head tilted back. The eyes might also start to look down at you, which creates more of a, like I said, a, a white space. You can't really see it here, but a white space above the eye. And the eye starts to hug that lower part of the eye a little bit more. The eyebrows seem to have really rise, raise off the eyes at that point, because when you tilt back, you're seeing more of a space there. And the forehead starts to look like less space, because that's tilted back and kind of flattening out. So that's, you start to get an idea of what that's like. Oh, he's lagging. <laughs> and the ears uh, fall way back on the head as well. And it seems kind of funny, but if you start looking at photos, you'll see that that is kind of where they end up when you tilt your head back. And, uh, and it's kind of a simple, simplification, I guess, of that sort of thing, but that's, that's sort of, uh, a little bit of the thought process that goes on when you when you tilt the head back. Now there's other angles that even I still struggle with if it's like a you know really extreme. I mean sometimes sometimes it's actually best to stay away from certain angles that just you struggle too much with. Try to find an alternate way to portray the same kind of shot. Like you know well if, that, if you're struggling with something too much, it's going to show and uh, you know you want to pick an angle you're confident with. That's not to say you shouldn't experiment and still push yourself to do this kind of stuff. But if it's not working, just try something else.